Hello and welcome back to the Future of Finance Revealed with Profix. I'm going to welcome on board Anurag Yagnik, who's the Chief Technology Officer for Profix. Welcome on board. And one of the things that I'm excited to have you on for is the fact that you're kind of the architect behind this all, making this all a reality. But everybody really wants to see what's going on. Can you show us these new agents and help us get a glimpse behind the scenes on what is being announced today? Hey, Rob. Um, great to be here, and I'd love to talk about it. But as you said, it's a lot better to see it. So um, let's take a look at a live demo first. Imagine it's November 2025, the time when Jordan normally kicks off the budgeting process. This year, the budgeting agent proactively reminds him to get started and offers to set everything up. Jordan provides a few high-level guidelines in plain language, a 3% increase in OPEX, and a requirement that any line item above 5% must include a comment. He also adds deadlines. From there, the agent takes over, configuring the entire workflow. It creates templates, sets up notification emails, and prepares a distribution list for 127 department heads. Jordan opens the workflow link to review. The agent asks what data should populate the templates, and Jordan instructs it to use January through October actuals, plus machine learning forecasts for November and December. Within minutes, the templates are ready. Jordan checks the auto-populated templates. Everything looks good, so he tells the agent to send out the kickoff emails. Now let's follow Zara, head of product marketing, as she receives her email to begin her OPEX budget. The agent guides her through her pre-filled template with clear instructions and smart prompts. Sales is targeting 10% growth. Would you like to increase advertising by 10% as well? Zara says yes, and the agent updates the figure applying seasonal distribution and logging the rationale. Next, Zara enters 10% of employee salaries for business license fees. The agent calculates the amount, offers options for distribution, and Zara selects an even spread. Because this is a large change, the agent automatically flags it and requests a comment, which Zara provides. Zara finalizes her changes and asks the agent to submit for her. The agent immediately notifies Jordan that product marketing's budget is ready for review. It provides a clear summary of changes and key highlights, such as a 10% increase in advertising aligned to sales growth. Jordan compares this version against the forecast. The agent surfaces key variances and shares a link to the full variance report. Confident in the submission, Jordan approves the budget. The agent records it and automatically reminds any departments still outstanding. In summary, both Jordan and Zara save significant time and effort. For Jordan, no need to manually prepare templates, coordinate timelines, or chase updates. He simply sets the parameters and validates submissions while the agent handles the heavy lifting. For Zara, a pre-filled, personalized starting point with contextual guidance. She adjusts values quickly, addresses anomalies proactively, and submits without endless back and forth. The result? A more accurate budget, faster cycle times, and a smoother, less resource-intensive process for everyone involved. Wow, that was really great. I really love seeing it. Again, I'm, I'm much a visual person as well. What else is going on behind here? Yeah, so what you saw um, is the amazing work done by the uh, Profix technology team. Uh, these are Profix AI agents, and what they really do behind the scenes is they are self-directed pieces of software um, that are designed to achieve specific business goals. So what we've done here is that the Profix AI agents are, are this pieces of technology that we've created to which we give specific uh, business goals and then a set of tasks and a set of tools or capabilities within our uh, Profix One applications. And these tool and these agents then find the best way to call these tools to run these tasks to achieve those larger business goals. Now, let's take a specific example. So as you saw in the, um, in the budgeting agent, right? So a prompt like, let's kick off the budgeting process for 2026. Now, sounds simple, but it's made up of a, of a lot of different things, right? So you have to create the setup for the whole budgeting process for 2026. You have to set up the template of the budgeting process you, or the budgets themselves you also have to give directives of what the budget budget's larger shape looks like in 2026. You also then have to do the manual process of identifying all the budget heads uh, that need to be 
uh, working with the budget. You have to send notifications to all these um, uh, department heads that are going to work on the budget. So all of this happens would have taken you know, hundreds of hours manually, right? So what we've done through these agencies is that they do all of this on their own autonomously. And the idea here is to save so much manual labor um, and give our teams the ability to do uh, all of this automatically. Yeah, we talk about taking the toil out of things yep. and the agents doing that. But one of the things that is, you know, top of mind for every organization is really around trust. Yeah. Can you kind of talk to some of the technology behind the scenes that's enabling transparency and explainability? Yeah, great question, right? So that's on everybody's, uh, everybody's mind. So our approach to Profix One Intelligence is let's build a glass box. And what that really means is that you have visibility into what is going on. There's full auditability. We, you, as you show, saw in the demo, we show you what the how the model is thinking, how our agents are thinking, so that you can, at any given point, check whether what it's doing is correct or not. You can click references for where it's pulling the data, so it all is kind of super transparent. And even this talk where we are explaining how the technology is working is all about giving confidence to our customers that there's no black magic here, even though it feels like black magic sometimes. It's really all super transparent. Yeah, it allows them to go in and really have the human in the loop at that point and really do the checks and balances for that. For sure, for sure. Anytime agents are not sure, they're not gonna make stuff up. They always ask the user for confirmation and they are always working with the user anytime there's a concern. So let's take another step back because data uh, privacy and security is also top of mind, especially in AI. How do you really ensure that sensitive financial data is really protected? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if you want to build a lot of cool stuff, our engineers are always trying to build the coolest thing on the planet. But what our customers are really worried about is well, not so fast, right? Privacy, security, and accuracy. That's what our customers care about. So, from a privacy perspective, you know, it really comes down to not using the customer data to train the model. So, the good news here is that. We don't use the, what I like to call the canonical models in the sky that we have very little control over. They're controlled by these large uh, foundational model providers like OpenAI or Anthropic. And these models running in the sky, you send your data over, you don't know what's going on. You, you, know, you check a little checkbox that says, you know, you won't use your data for training, but there's really no way to ensure. So what we've done instead is that instead of using these canonical models in the sky, what we do is we use AWS Bedrock. And what that allows us to do is use a copy of one of these foundational models with no egress out of this system so that customer data is never really ever reaching to foundational model providers. That gives our customers complete privacy. Going to security. So another approach that we've uh, taken is we don't just give the LLM all the data and say, you know what, go, go nuts, train on this, and then just answer whatever the user asks. That's another very traditional approach. We didn't go with that. What we said instead was, hey, LLM, here are a set of tasks, and here are a set of tools, which are really data APIs that are presented by our applications. So the LLM then basically allows us to intelligently call these data APIs anytime there's a question or anytime there is access to data, data that is required to achieve a business goal. Now, all of these data APIs are the same ones that are used by Profix One applications in general. And what that ensures is that all the authentication, authorization rules that the customers have set up apply in the AI scenario, just like they apply in any regular use case outside AI as well. So 100% guarantee that the users do not ever see data that they're not authorized to see. So that really brings together the fact that the agent is really that partner to that person in finance and has the same kind of permissions. Exactly. And the last point we didn't touch upon was accuracy, right? So a couple of things there. So use of data APIs, as we talked about, also ensures that we're giving customers the access to the latest and greatest data. There's no delay. There's no stale data that the um, model is trained on. So, you know, we don't have a disclaimer that your data is as of you know, 9 p.m. last night, none of that. You're getting access to real-time, most accurate data. That's one side of it. The other is 
the way it, we are using models from AWS Bedrock, it allows us to treat these models as a traditional software component within our solution. So what that really means is that if a new model is published, right, we don't have to push it. It doesn't automatically get pushed to customer's production environment. We can treat this as any other software update. We test it. We make sure it's working from a performance perspective, from a quality perspective, from a guardrails perspective. And when we feel good, we can push a new model out along with the rest of our software. So we've converted LLMs into a traditional software component, which is really great for us and for our customers. No, I, I think that is fantastic. And you kind of mentioned it with the authentication and authorization and you know, kind of the AAA aspects of uh, security, the integration from a Profix One platform perspective. But how do these agents really integrate even further than just at the authorization level? Yeah, so the, the, the great thing about the Profix One intelligence is that it is a core component of Profix One, the platform. And it has access to um, all the data across all of these different applications, all the workflows, all the security, all the configurations, all the integrations that we might have done with ERP, CRM, HRIS systems, all of that access is available uh, to these, um, these agents. So there's nothing extra that anyone has to do. They're a part of the core platform. So that may be you know, jogging in people's heads. Do I have to replatform or change my existing structures to adopt these agents? What do you say to those organizations? Well, I have great news for you. You have to do nothing. Profix One Intelligence is really designed for zero time to value. So you just use the software as if as you have been using it now. And AI turns on if you choose to turn it on. Um, AI just gives you the benefits without you having to re-platform or do anything because that's how we've designed it. I love it. I love how it's just built in from the beginning yep. in, inside there. Great, great stuff. Thanks, Anurag, for coming on board. Thank you. And we can't wait for what users will do with our software. Uh, it's always fun to see that, I'm sure. Being on the technology side, you, yep. you always want to see that engagement. So, But thanks again. Thank you. And thank you for watching this episode of The Future of Finance Revealed by Profix. We'll be back from Toronto shortly.